Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I've got this Pioneer aftermarket head unit to take apart. On the front here we have a touch screen. Here we have the slot for the CDs and DVDs. And we have some button controls on the side here. Alright, here's the back of the unit. We have various connectors here on the back. We also have a fan and a 10 amp fuse. This unit was manufactured in March of 2010. Here's our information tag here. This is the model AVIC X290BT. You might be surprised to hear that this unit runs a cut down version of Windows. Here we have the activation key for the Windows version. This is Windows Automotive 5.5. Okay, the first thing to do on this is take off this top cover here. You can see that it does not have any screws holding it on, just a few snaps. Here's the disk drive module. You can see it is being connected to the main board with this one ribbon wire here. Here it is without the cover. This is one of those self-feed drives, so we have a motor back here to move the CD in and out. You can see the whole drive reading assembly on the inside is mounted on the shock mounts. That's because this would be operating in a moving vehicle. Once I've taken a few covers off this, you can see this metal bar here that has some rubber on it. This is the part that rotates and pulls in the CD. Alright, here's the little circuit board from the drive. This small chip is a motor controller for driving the different motors. Here we have our disk drive controller and decoder chip. This chip is responsible for controlling the drive assembly. It's also responsible for decoding the different types of audio and video coming off the different types of disks this thing can read. Here's what we have on the back of the board. These two chips here are flash chips. They are 16 megabits each. These chips are what store the code and the instructions for running this chip here. We also have a DRAM chip here. This one is 64 megabits. All right, here's the inside. We have one big board here and a smaller daughter board. We also have a tiny little coax wire going to this daughter board from this little coax wire here for the GPS. Here we can see a tiny little ribbon wire going to this micro SD card slot here on the front. It looks like there was a spot here to solder on a full size SD card reader. All right, so here's the board. So this is basically just a single board computer which runs the head unit. If I remove this back cover here, which acts as a heat sink, we can see we have some more chips on the back and we have some thermal pads to help cool down the chips. Right here in the center, we have our Surf Prima microprocessor. This is a single core ARM processor. Our CPU has these two flash chips here for storing the code that this CPU needs to function. Our CPU here has four 256 megabit SD RAM chips. We have two on that side and two on the other. The CPU uses these chips for memory while it's running. Right here we have a Toshiba picture processor. This is basically a tiny GPU for running the 480p display. Here we have a Xilinx CPLD chip. This is a EEPROM based programmable logic chip. This chip contains 256 microcells, each of which can be programmed also on the back side of the board, we have this Samsung memory chip. I can't find any information on this chip, but it might be used for storing the operating system. To get this board out here, we have to take off this back aluminum piece here. Now we can pull it off once I've disconnected this fan here. This piece is made out of aluminum, so it acts as a heat sink to this amplifier chip right here. Okay, now I can remove this board. Before I can take this board off, I have to disconnect this ribbon wire here. Now I can just pull it out. And here's that board. You can see we don't have too much on it. We do have a board to board connector here, which connects the bottom side of this board into this circuit board here. We also have this board to board connector here, which connects to the bottom side of the CPU board. We do have a little can here that we can take off. It just snaps off from the back side here. Here's what we have underneath. We have a pair of inductors, two power regulators, and two diodes. 
So this must be for power regulation. All right, the next step is to separate these two metal pieces here and the front screen assembly. Okay, now these sections can be pulled apart. Here's our front screen assembly. Here we have another board connected to this metal piece here. And here is the bottom piece. All right, so here's our amplifier board. You can see we have some big caps on here. We also have an inductor. We have two MOSFETs here. And here is our main Class D amplifier chip. It's a Pioneer MOSFET PA2030A. This amp would be powering the speakers inside the doors. You can also see we have two large pins here. That is for power and ground for powering this unit. Okay, so here is what's on the back side of the amplifier board. We have a few chips to look at. This chip here is a microcontroller made by Renesas. This little Panasonic chip here is a audio video switch chip. I can't really find much information on this Pioneer chip here, but it seems to be some sort of general audio controller chip here for this amplifier board. All right, so let's take a look at this piece here. So here's the removed board. We have our main antenna connection here. We have a tuner module here. And we have this little ribbon wire here which connected this board to this board. You can see we don't really have too much going on on the back side. Okay, now we can take a look at the front panel. All right, the next thing to do is to remove all these screws and connectors holding on this board. Here's the removed board, and this is what's on the back. Right here we have a LED driver chip. This is for driving the backlight in the screen. And on the back here we have a power management IC. Here's the Bluetooth module that should be pretty easy to take off. Just like that, it uses a small little board-to-board -board connector. This is what it looks like. Here's the Bluetooth module with the cover removed. Here it looks like we have some sort of microcontroller. It must have some sort of ARM CPU inside of it. There is no data sheet for this. And over here we have a flash chip. This is for storing the code and instructions that this microcontroller here needs to function properly. And this chip here is the Bluetooth transmitter and receiver chip. Next, I want to take off this metal piece here. All right, here's what's under the shield. We have one small chip and a few other components. So this little chip here is a deserializer chip. This head unit here has a backup camera system. So instead of having a whole bunch of wires going back to the camera, we have a serializer system that compresses that data down into one or two signals. So once it comes to this unit in one or two signals, it needs to be decompressed and reconstructed. So that's what this deserializer chip here does. All right, so here's the rest of the screen assembly. It looks like we have a metal bracket in here that needs to come out. And it looks like I need to take out this little piece here. Here's that little board. This is for the micro SD card slot. Okay, after I have taken out a few more screws, I can Pull this off. There's just a few snaps holding it on. Now we can take out the screen. Here it is. Here's that little ribbon wire here that goes to the touch screen panel on the front here. You can see here it's just sort of glued on to the front. It's just this transparent touch screen panel. And then here's the display. There's our backlight power connector and our data connector. Now the last thing to come off here is this little circuit board here for the buttons. There are two screws holding it on. Okay, here it is. You can see we have some buttons and LEDs on the front side. And here's the little coax connector for the Bluetooth antenna that's built into this board. Alright guys, that's about it for this teardown. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.